Welcome to Wednesday, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your patience as we worked out some uh, tech issues this morning. Um, I'm so glad it's better for everybody because I have a really fun lesson today. So um, I'm excited to do it. And um, if we do go over time, please stick with me because I want to make sure that you get your assignments and I want to make sure that you know what you're doing after the lesson and that you feel comfortable. So thanks for sticking with me guys, if we do go over today. Um, I'm excited to start Rome today, our last unit in the, uh, the chapter. And I have some, uh, some great people today to help me and assist me today in that. Um, I am going to introduce you to those people now. Um, Kate, thank you so much for, um, your communication this morning, letting me know about my computer. Um, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm doing well, doing well. Now that everything's fixed. Can you hear me? Out, I can totally hear you, yep. Um, and then we also have, um, joining Kate as an assistant today, we have Colin. Colin, good morning. All right, Colin. Good morning. There you are. Good morning. Um, I am going to have you guys kind of start with your expectations for your classmates today. And um, Kate, why don't you go ahead and start with, um, with what you think your classmates should do today and your expectations for them. Um, just kind of like the basic, just kind of like pay attention and kind of label all the like uh locations that you need to know so that you can do well on all the assignments that like you give us for this week awesome thank you yeah that's definitely something to do um, we have two assignments this week that um, if you guys don't know what they are we're definitely going to talk about them today so stick around and uh colin uh good morning what uh what advice expectations do you have for your classmates today all 62 of us today Uh, I expect like basically what Kate said, but like don't sneak on games because I know you can do that on Zoom. But so don't do that. But like listen so you can get good grades on the assignment. All right, Colin, and it um, it also um, brings to my attention too that I think that you have a quote that you'd like to share today, or some kind of words of wisdom that you'd like to impart on your classmates. Is that right? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, whenever you're ready to uh, say those, um, we'd love to hear from you. So my quote is, um, there's no, there's no such thing as mistakes, just happy accidents. <laughs> Bob Ross. I was going to say that's from the infamous Bob Ross. And do you feel that that quote works for you in certain circumstances? Oh, a lot of circumstances. <laughs> a lot of circumstances. Yeah, it's, it's a great quote. Bob Ross is awesome. And thanks for sharing that knowledge with us today, Colin. I appreciate that. Your classmates do too. I am going to show you guys what you need today officially. Um, if you take a look at the screen, today we're going to be learning the physical features of Rome. Um, good news is a lot of them are similar to Greece because they're close by to each other. So that's pretty cool. And then you guys are going to compare and contrast Rome and Greek ideas and customs because since Greece was so close to Rome, they borrowed a lot of stuff from them. So today we're going to be going through all of the things that they shared and they borrowed from Greece because Rome, you know, has a lot of those similar things. Again, today you need your chapter 32 note sheet, which I posted on Edsby, and then of course your Rome map and questions. This is a great time, guys, to get into a quiet spot, to um, reduce the noise around you, and to focus in on the lesson today. I am gonna share Edsby with you, so in case you guys are needing to see where your assignments are and what they look like, um, I'm gonna post that for you. I have posted it for you. I'm just going to show you. And this is our first period. 
Our objectives are the same that I just went over from the PowerPoint. They're right there. Um, no IXL today. There hasn't been for a while, so don't worry about that. Um, thanks for joining in for the live lesson. And I have attached not only the PowerPoint today, but the math and questions and the note sheet if you need to go grab that. Um, today's assignments. I'm gonna be assigning the Rome map and questions, questions just one through seven, and they are attached to the journal post. So that is gonna be due by Friday. And don't forget, if you have not done your Socratic seminar reflection, that is also due by Friday too. Some of you guys have turned it in already. Thank you. Your grades are in EDSB for that. And if you haven't, you have until Friday. So two things do this week, guys. There is no test from my class this week. So you guys have that off, yay. And anything that you guys need, just go to your EDSB page. It's all posted there, okay? Moving on. Um, we have a couple of hands raised. Um, Brayden, what's going on with you today? Um, can we turn in the map and questions before Friday? Is that okay? I Yes, if you would love to actually turn in any assignment before Friday, I am grading as I get them. So feel free to do that. That's a wonderful question. Um, if you have any of that stuff, please turn it in by Friday. Liam, what's your question? Um, I, when you, well, this is about, I raised my hand about the, um, Zoom. Oh, okay. Thing about the Zoom because there's something weird that happened. Okay. Yeah, we had a, a rough morning it's, with Zoom, but we're good. We're back the, in business. For the, for the, wait, for the chat it's not to you anymore it's to matthew baxter for some reason the chat is oh yeah okay um interesting maybe we need you need to log back log out and log back in i don't know i'm not sure i think everyone's everyone's is to me right now since i'm the host so I don't know. Thank you for bringing that to my attention though, Liam. I'll, I'll look into that as we go through today. But we're gonna go ahead and start um, with our lesson. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for, for being on board with us today and for, for being here in the lesson. Um, so today we are going to be starting a new chapter. You guys know the chapter, but just a couple of fun facts. I used to do this bell work with my students a while ago. Um, this city depends largely on tourism. Kate, what's tourism? Uh, like when lots of people, maybe like internationally or just from like other states or anything, go visit to whatever location that is. Yes, 100%. So a lot of people go visit the spot. This contains Vatican City including St. Peter's Church, and it is connected by a highway with many parts of the country. So it, the famous saying is, all roads lead here. Uh, Colin, do you know where in the world this is? Kate, do you know where this is? Vatican uh, City. Um, I don't really think so. Like St. Peter's Church kind of sounds like familiar, but I don't really know. Okay, Colin? Maybe like... Oh, Isn't wait. Um, in Vatican City? Or in Italy. Okay, you're close. I have Cooper and Trey in the chat screaming out, it's Rome! So let's see if they're right. Did you guess Rome at home? Yes, you are correct. So that is our little teaser for our intro for this chapter. Here are some beautiful photos of Rome and the cityscape of Rome and, and what they have built. So that is what we're focusing on today. And our lesson is Rome. 
And our agenda for today, um, we're, we've already said our welcomes and our hellos, but we're gonna predict Rome's physical features. We do have a short video today. We're gonna do our notes on what did Rome borrow from Greece, what types of things in their culture. And then we are gonna go over our map of Rome so that you guys feel comfortable doing your assignment today um, with the homework. So that is what our agenda is today, guys. And um, let's have a great day today with everything. Let's make sure that we're in a nice quiet spot and that if you want anything to say, you raise your hands in the lesson. And we're gonna go forward with what we know about Rome. So um, we have, all of these chapters that we've done this is the last chapter ch last unit of ancient history which is crazy we've made it this far so we have a lot of knowledge about past civilizations so what do we know about rome based upon our prior knowledge physical features think about the location of rome anything cultural that you guys know about rome anything else that you guys want to say Go ahead and pop that into the chat if you guys have any predictions, and then I might call on you to share out your prediction. So thank you guys for being there. Thank you for um, adding in your thoughts to the chat. I have Maddox um, that says that they borrowed the architecture. Um, Maddox, why don't you go ahead and elaborate on that a little bit? Oh, okay. Um, so, um, what I mean by they borrowed the architecture is, I mean that they kind of um <clears throat> had the they kind of took the idea to make um to make their own homes and stuff like that, and to kind of make it more advanced with uh, I guess you could say um newer apartments and stuff like that instead of kind of just doing it their own style. They kind of enjoyed how symmetrical and the pillars, how like, blend, like I guess you could say mm -hmm. amazing they look. So they kind of took the idea, um, integrated it into their own buildings. Yeah, beautiful answer, Maddox. You're exactly right. Um, one of our sections today is dedicated solely to architecture and how the, uh, the Romans borrowed a lot of the Greek ways of building. So perfect answer there. I have a lot of people talking about the Greek gods and goddesses and how the, those were kind of translated into, um, into Roman gods and goddesses, but it was like the mirror image. Theo, do you want to kind of elaborate on your answer um, when it comes to the gods and goddesses there? Um, <laughs> uh, well, I know that I can... Um... Rome has gods and goddesses, and <laughs> I kind of like you said earlier that um they were near each other. So I kind of thought that maybe uh, they got that kind of from uh, Greece. Mm hmm. One hundred percent. You are right on board, along with Arij, along with Ayla, um, all talking about the gods and goddesses. Now you know with um, with a new unit, we do a lot of geography. Um, so can we predict like what the geography is going to be like in Rome? Um, we know Rome is not like a big place. It's a city. So what can we talk about with the geography? Any other, um, any other requirements there? Kate, Colin, feel free to, to jump in too if you feel like you have any predictions on the physical features. Somebody else said architecture has to do with it. Um. You can go ahead, Colin. Um, I think it's going to be like rocky because like I know in Europe they have a lot of mountains. So I think it's going to be a pretty rocky like in mountains. What a wonderful prediction, Colin. Yes, thank you for predicting that, you know, just like Greece, what is, is also in Europe, it had a lot of mountains there. 
Um, maybe Rome as well will have a lot of mountains. So based upon lots of mountains, can we make a prediction on everyday life, farming, food, all that stuff? And Kate, feel free to jump into that too. Uh, I kind of feel like it might be hard to like travel around because kind of like trapped in like Sparta was. Mm, okay, yeah, it might be hard to travel in Rome. That's a really good prediction, especially if Colin said that there's lots of mountains nearby. Um, what about enemies? Does, is Rome maybe protected? Does anybody have predictions there as far as, you know, we know that there's enemies out there. Anybody have predictions on the physical features being something to protect or not protect? Will, what do you think? I, I thought um, because the like Rome is kind of bordered by a lot of mountains on the um, land part. Um, so they can't like it would be really hard for enemies to come that way. And um, the only other route is by sea. And as we learned from Greece is that um, it was kind of hard to go by sea because of like the waves and stuff. Like sometimes the boats like of like everything fell off of the boats and they all sank. Mm. So yeah, that's the only way that enemies could really get to it. So. Wonderful yeah. answer. Uh, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. And I ha have Sophia too um, here also saying it'd be hard to cross the mountains. So maybe they're protected by those mountains as well. Um, so that's, that's a great prediction. Um, mountains are definitely natural barriers here. So those are some great thoughts right from the start about Rome. I have found a really, really good video. Um, it's about a four minute video and it really, really does a great job of talking about Rome's lucky location. Like it was really, really in a wonderful location. I'm gonna mute everybody right now and we are going to watch this video. Um, I'm going to cross my fingers because of the, you know, the internet, the lagginess. So feel free just to listen in um, on the video as well. I'm going to make it a little big, but it's just a really, really great video on its location. And it's from another teacher. Uh, this teacher has a smart board, so he's able to write and explain. So I thought this was a really, really great video to do that. So I'm going to be in a quiet spot so that you can hear it. And we're going to move forward with that video. It's really, really good. So pay attention. And it's really going to show um, a lot of things that we're going to be doing later in the lesson today. So it'll help you guys navigate that stuff. Here is the video. Hello, historians. I'm Mr. Fredo. Very excited today. We get to begin our mini lessons for uh, ancient Rome and what will eventually become the Roman Empire. So today to get us started, almost as always, we'll start with the geography of Rome, the city, and the country it's within, or what will eventually be within Italy. But what we really want to focus on is how the Romans absolutely, positively luck out with where they first established uh, their initial civilization. So to get us started, this would be a more contemporary map of uh, the continent of Europe. But for the Romans, they start off right here. That's it, the western coast of central Italy. Okay, I have people saying that they can't see the video. So I'm gonna start it again. And if you can see it, let me know if it's better. Friends, I'm Mr. Fredo, very excited today. We get to begin our mini lessons for uh, ancient Rome and what will eventually become the Roman Empire. So today to get us started, almost as always, we'll start with the geography of Rome, the city, and the country it's within, or what will eventually be within Italy. But what we really want to focus on is how the Romans absolutely, positively luck out with where they first established uh, their initial civilization. So to get us started, this would be a more contemporary map of uh, the continent of Europe 
But for the Romans, they start off right here. That's it. The western coast of central Italy in a very, very small area right along the Tiber River in an area that's surrounded by seven different hills. You'll probably hear a lot in our readings and our discussions about the seven hills of Rome. These different uh, hills kind of help surround the city and uh, give them a huge strategic advantage in terms of um, being able to defend themselves from early attacks. But in some ways, similar to uh, ancient Greece, our previous unit, because there is a mountain range that runs straight through the Italian peninsula, um, the Apennine Mountains. But the difference is, number one, it doesn't completely engulf where they're from and where they settle. It's just kind of a, one of their borders. Another huge difference is the Romans have what we consider to be a lifeline river, the Tiber, a fresh water source as they're getting started. The ancient Greeks certainly did not. But in terms of our big focus with the Romans and their geography and where they settle, we really want to focus on what makes their location so lucky. Here's Rome. We already know one reason they're lucky is they're not completely surrounded by mountains. The Apennines kind of run right through central Italy. They have that lifeline river, the Tiber. That's another way that they luck out. They're also lucky in terms of their access to the coast. It's going to give them some movement later on. But what they really luck out with is their neighbors. Where they settle is sandwiched directly between two other massively impressive ancient civilizations, and that's to the north, the Etruscans, and to the south, our good friends, the Greeks. And this is a truly momentous uh, opportunity for the ancient Romans because both of these civilizations, the Etruscans and the Greeks, are already, by the time Rome is being founded in the late 700 CE, uh, excuse me, BCE, the Etruscans have already long established themselves as being great engineers, as being great writers, and the Greeks have already long established themselves as architects, thinkers, creators of uh, different forms of government, namely direct democracy. And the Romans have this great advantage of simply being where they are and taking these ideas and then refining them and making them better into their own. For example, the Etruscans had this great uh, engineering idea called a caniculus. It was an underground trench that was used to carry water from one place to another. The Romans eventually had adapt that idea for their aqueducts, those large bridges that are going to carry water over a long area to the cities. The Greeks, on the other hand, come up with direct democracy. The Romans will eventually adjust that into what becomes the Roman Republic, where instead of rule by the people and directly voting, uh, the Romans will elect senators and the senators will make decisions on behalf of the people. But again, they were chosen by the people to begin with. So cannot be overstated the importance of this location and how it gives the Romans a true jump start in their ability to start establishing it, uh, the greatest empire the world had ever known at that point. This is like the Romans today. Uh, if your neighbor doesn't lock their Wi-Fi and you're just taking their, their internet from them and you don't have to pay for internet. That's essentially what the Romans get to do in the 600s, uh, 500s, 400s, 300s BCE. And they have the benefit of taking all of these great ideas from these two very, very impressive ancient civilizations. And they use those ideas to give them the jump start to the point where they're eventually going to take over much of the known Mediterranean world at that time as we look at the start of the empire and beyond. All right, so maybe you guys can see why I really like that video, just because he does such a great job of explaining um, why that location is just so important for Rome. I, I love what he said, and you know, guys, with the Sumerians, with the Mesopotamians, like they didn't have anybody to guide them. They had to do it all by themselves. So think about it, Rome had so many opportunities to hear about what they can do for their culture, what they can do for their civilization, and they can borrow it right from their neighbors next door. I loved his Wi-Fi reference. I know that we may have done that before, borrowed our neighbor's Wi-Fi, but they were just borrowing and borrowing and they didn't have to pay for anything. It was really, really lucky. Um, they had a river, unlike Greece, and the river, river running right through their civilization. Of course, we know the river is like a lifeline for that civilization, 
but they were also on the coast of the Tyrrhenian Sea as well. So they had that trade um, and that access to the Mediterranean world. So again, their location was, was amazing. To, so to start out your civilization with all of those things on your side, they're, I mean, it's looking good. They were able to learn, like Maddox is saying here in the chat, like kind of from an older brother, like, you know, with their arm around your shoulder, like teaching you the ways, like they had that. And which, you know, it could have been a, a reason into why Rome blew up as far as its population. We talked last chapter about Alexander and how he conquered and had the largest empire. Well, guys, we're about to put that in the past and take a look at what Rome did with, you know, their power and their expansion. So it's, it's pretty much, uh, it's, it's a go for them. So what I'd like to do, speaking of their neighbors, the Greeks and the Etruscans, I would like to take our note sheet that I had you guys print. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like. I'm going to have you take your note sheet and we're going to kind of take notes on the little things that um, the Romans borrowed from each uh, civilization. So your note sheet should look a little something like this. Um, I'm posting it here on the screen. It has a little map so that we can kind of see the, you know, the Etruscans here and the Greeks over here. And then, of course, Rome right over here. So and then in each section, um, it's going to we're going to write down what uh, Rome was able to borrow from either Greeks or the Etruscans. So go ahead and write those in. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to either have this sheet up. Um, you can have a piece of paper if you wanna write that down. Um, I can even show you a little trick on TCI if you guys wanna do that as well. Um, as you guys know, TCI is an amazing resource. And um, if you guys even wanna do your map this way, um, you are able to do your map on TCI as well. So let me just show you that before we get started. So this is chapter 32. I cannot believe we're on chapter 32 already. That's so crazy, but 32. And if you look down below here, I'm at the section setting the stage. If you go down here, you're gonna see that exact map that I'm assigning today and then all of the questions. So you can do your homework this way. But if you also want to do the assignment that we are doing, I'm gonna to go to the introduction and hopefully it is going to change over. And once I do that and I scroll again all the way down, um, it's gonna kind of show the different features of both Greece and Rome. And then if I, select section two, again, scrolling all the way down, um, it's gonna again show us the activities. Okay, so section three. So you can go ahead and write, I believe it's on section three, you can go ahead and write all of the influences for each section. So if you don't have a printer, um, if that's not working out for you, you can go ahead and write your answers right in TCI there. Um, your notes are not due, so don't send me your notes. This is just for you guys to help you um, figure out um, the different things. So uh, Colin, Kate, are you guys still with us? Are you still um, there? You guys are unmuted now. Um, yes. Okay, cool. What did you guys think of the video? I thought it was uh, cool. Yeah, it was like really, I think it helped. I think it was if like, it was helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always love that video. It, it just, he really does a great job of explaining um, where Rome really got its, its culture from. So I'm really excited to kind of share that with you guys now. Um, I am going to actually go back to TCI. I'm going to go to section three, because that's where we're going to go ahead and start. So if you have your map and questions, which looks like this, you guys will see it'll start on section three right here, okay? Section three is all about, or section three through eight really, is all about the different, um, I guess, categories, the different categories of things that 
they share it. So engineering, sporting events, architecture, writing, art, and religion are the things that we're going to be talking about today in those little boxes. Um, did the Romans get everything from Greece? No. They also had neighbors to the north called the Etruscans, and they, they actually borrowed things from the Etruscans as well, okay? So that is, we're gonna also be denoting, did they get engineering from Greece or the Etruscans? So make sure you take a note of that too. I feel like I have like so many resources for this chapter. Sorry, I'm sharing my screen so much, but there is so much to share. All right, so section three, you guys should be there on your notes. We're gonna talk about engineering, okay? Engineering came strictly from the Etruscans. So if you wanna write Etruscans, I know on mine, I just wrote an E. If you wanna write an E to denote that that particular thing came from the Etruscans, you can. So two things came from the Etruscans that Rome borrowed, and that is the arch, which is pictured here. So go ahead and write in the little box, they borrowed the arch. And then in the video with the gentleman today, he also mentioned, and you may have heard it, the caniculus. The caniculus, guys, is that underground irrigation system that Rome used to bring water to their city, okay? So if you wanna write the arch and the caniculus, um, caniculus is C-U-N-I, C-U-L-U-S, C-U-L-U-S, C-U-L-U-S. It kind of sounds like cuneiform, caniculus, cuneiform. <laughs> um, here in the text, you're able to read a, a little bit further about Etruscan engineering. Um, you can see the caniculus was an underground trench. It connected to the grounds and they used it to irrigate their land. So remember, they had a river, they had a lifeline. So they, ha they had access to growing crops there. All right, section three. Um, Kate and Colin, um, any questions that you think your classmates might have on section three before we move forward? Um, I don't really think so. Okay, pretty straightforward. Two things. Um, we're doing two things that came from the Etruscans to Rome. And uh, make sure you guys know it's Etruscan influence this time. We're gonna move on to section four. Section four, I like this one, sporting events. Um, some of you guys might like this one too. Um, speaking of the Greek Olympics, which was a huge showcase of sports, um, the Romans also adapted to Etruscan sporting events. So for section four, I would write either Etruscan or the letter E to denote that it was Etruscan. The first one, I, um, I was really interested in this first one, which one of the first sporting events that came from Etruscans was slave fighting. So apparently when a slave master died, part of the funeral was to have two slaves fight each other to the death, okay? So again, one slave is dying in this battle, in this fight. But after the slave was congratulated for beating the other slave, then that slave was executed. So it's like for pure entertainment, two slaves going at it at a funeral, mind you. So at a time what it's like supposed to be sad, these slaves are fighting and then it, they're both gonna die. And um, it's, it's just really interesting and, and maybe their mindset is, and you guys can write in the chat what you think, um, maybe their mindset is it's an honor to die along with your master and maybe they continue to serve their master. Um, and the thing is, is I'm not sure even if they believe in the afterlife because they have the, you know, the gods and goddesses that rule the earth. So it's just a really interesting concept. I thought about this a lot yesterday when I was doing this lesson, uh, when I was reading on this lesson and reminding myself like, wow, that's crazy. So anyways, number four, section four, they took slave fighting from the Etruscans. 
And, uh, and then they chose, or, and then they did chariot races as well, which seems a little bit better, but again, the chariot races, sometimes if a driver tipped over the chariot, like it would get trampled by the horses and it's just very, just very bloody and, and very crazy. But the people went crazy. They thought this was like the most like the best entertainment ever. I mean, they're in the Coliseum, they're watching all this, people are getting trampled, like, oh my goodness. So talk about entertainment. I mean, um, yeah, it, I thought, I think it's just really, um, it's just kind of interesting, interesting ways to, uh, to keep entertained. Um, how do they choose the two slaves? That's a great question. Maybe it's by chance, maybe it's random, I, I really don't know. Um, Will is pretty, you know, he's feeling pretty awful about this right now. And uh, Hades ruled the afterlife. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Nick, thank you for that. Thank you, Maddox. Yeah, it's, it's like bloody boxing for sure. So anyways, the sporting events was, was really interesting. So that's section four and Romans actually ended up doing that. As you can see, um, the Romans had lots of gladiators. There is a movie called Gladiator. Um, so they're professionally trained fighters. They would fight each other. They would fight wild animals. Um, remember, the Romans just really went crazy over this type of, of entertainment. So yeah, that's what the Romans got to borrow from the Etruscans. So the Etruscans kind of seem like, you know, pretty interesting people. Um, but I would like to go to our next section, which is architecture. That sounds a little bit more refined, and of course it is because it came from Greece. So let's kind of go away from, you know, the crazy Etruscans, and let's go to our Greek influence, which seems a little bit more refined in particular. So here this is. This is section five, architecture. And I think Maddox brought this up earlier in the chat or earlier in the lesson that architecture was something that, you know, we see in Rome that is from Greece and he was right. Um, taking a look at architecture, remember the temples were the homes for the gods. Um, Rome adapted that. They built temples for their gods as well. Um, they did um, marble temples. Um, just like the Parthenon, and they had Greek designs in their um, public buildings. So um, when you see like Roman columns, like the kind I had in my classroom, like the ones made out of styrofoam, a lot of people were like, ooh, you have Roman columns. And then a lot of people were like, ooh, you have Greek columns. And honestly, they both borrowed that concept from each other. So um, yeah, I guess both people that are right that say that. So. For section five, I for the little um, square, I would put Greek, that the Greeks influenced architecture. But I would also put like, they built temples for their gods as well. Maybe even marble temples, if you wanna add the word marble in there. Um, also public buildings, they used Greek designs that, you know, you guys are able to read here too. That's why I have the textbook up so you guys can kind of read on your own. Um, the Romans used concrete to build huge stadiums. Um, we just talked about gladiators and the Colosseum is where um, the gladiators fought, not the Parthenon, the Colosseum this time. And then the Circus Maximus where people watch the chariot races. Um, the Circus Maximus could seat more than 200,000 people. So a lot of people came, again, watching that form of, yeah, fighting. Interesting. All right, guys, we've done section three, four, and five. Kate and Colin, what is your favorite influence so far? Hmm. So I think I like engineering because like it's cool. How... What? I said it's okay. You guys can um, talk. I think like engineering because <laughs> um, I say engineering because like I think it's cool how and I don't really know like it's just kind of cool how like the Romans can just like 
they don't have to take credit. They're just like, I'm just going to like steal all of these ideas from you. And like, it, I'm just kind of confused. Like, did the Etruscans like know about this? Like, mm-hmm. cause I think if like that happened in like one empire, I would be, if I were like a ruler or something, I would be mad that they took our ideas. Yeah. 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 Totally. Like, you know, when someone copies something, I'm just kind of confused, yeah. like how it got. Yeah, you want to get the credit. Like if someone's like, hey, I'm doing this and -and so-and-so does this. Yeah. What about you, Colin? So far, what are you liking? Mm -hmm. I'm liking, like, I'm liking sports and and, and, um, architecture because, like, I like how like the like the um can like the waterway that they did water because I feel like that's really smart. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I love sports, so I mean, of course. And what better than these type of sports too that are just you know a great show of strength? That sarcasm. Anyways, we're gonna move on to the next sections. Um, so six, seven, and eight is what we have left. Um, that's Greek writing, Greek art and Greek religion. So all the rest of the influences are Greek influences. Yay. So let's take a moment real quick to talk about Greek writing. Okay. So this is pretty interesting. Um, So (laughs) the Greek alphabet was adopted by the Etruscans, changed by the Etruscans, and then the Romans borrowed the Etruscans version. So that's pretty confusing, but we know that Greeks had the start of that influence, okay? So for the alphabet, um, I would write that in the little square um, for writing that Rome got the alphabet from Greece, which again, they got it from the Etruscans, but the Etruscans got it from Greece. So that's why I'm going to say it's from Greece. Um, a lot of changing going on it and putting their own personal mark on it. But hey, that's okay, right? We all want to leave our mark. Um, the Greek alphabet had a more direct influence on Roman culture. Um, the Romans wrote in all capital letters. Ooh, I, I tried to do that for like my senior year of high school. I'm like, I'm going to write in all caps this year. Um, yeah, it was, it was hard. It, was, it took a lot of time. Um, anyways, the Greeks... Just like, you know, King Sargon, just like Hammurabi, they carved their documents, they carved their rules and stuff into um, different bronze, different stone plaques, steelies, um, and they made sure that those were displayed in public so everybody could see everything that they were writing, if it was laws, if it was a declaration. Um, yeah, and then the last thing for writing, okay, so first you should have alphabet, something about the alphabet is that the Romans also borrowed that like epic poem, that myth type of story that we love. I talked about the Odyssey and the Iliad back in Greece. And so there was a Roman poet named Virgil who was kind of like Homer and wrote those types of long epic journeys. Um, One of his most famous poems is the Aeneid, the Aeneid. Okay, so Trojan Prince, and uh, they borrowed a lot of the uh, Greek poetry and Greek myths. Um, so you guys can go ahead and write that too in, um, in that square, Greek poetry and Greek myths. All right. Moving on, we have two more sections and then I'm gonna go over your map, guys, and then we're done for the day, okay? The next section is the influence of Greek art. Greek art, so um, for Greek art, you can see that the first photo is pottery, okay? So that was the first influence, was Romans borrowed that pottery big time, okay? They valued the pottery, they used it for purpose. They actually kind of used it for vessels, for storing water, wine, but they also used it for its beauty. Okay. They, they're very gorgeous to look at. And some of these pottery pieces are actually on display at the Tampa Museum of Art. So if you get to go there, um, a lot of poetry, a lot of pottery 
is, is at the museum, a lot of pottery. So the Romans borrowed that from Greece. They eagerly took the work of Greek potters into their homes and they imitated the technique, but of course they adopted their own style as well. And then the next thing, painting, sculpting, those forms of artistic expression were also adopted by the Romans, okay? They created lifelike statues, just like the Greeks did. They wanted those statues to look perfect. They wanted those statues to look like gods, okay? So they celebrated those leaders. Also, um, the Roman sculptors um, wanted to do um, like portraits of their leaders so that they could put those leaders around town and to kind of show off the leaders. So they sculpted their leaders a lot too. So for section seven, art, you should have pottery, painting, and sculpting as influences for Romans. And then we've made it to the last section. And a lot of you guys mentioned this when we were doing our predictions, and that's religion, and that gods and goddesses were adopted by the Romans from Greece. And you guys were right. So nice job. Um, in, it's interesting, though, they got the rituals, like the religious rituals from the Etruscans. Okay, so right here, they followed the Etruscan rituals. But the gods and goddesses came from Greece. So it's a little, you know, shared um, category here. Um, the early Romans had their own gods and rituals, but of course, coming in contact with those cultures, they can get those ideas, like stealing their Wi-Fi. So that's exactly what they did, okay? Romans were concerned with performing the right ritual for the right occasion. So they were, they wanted to be, they wanted to make sure that they were honoring the gods in the best way they possibly could, okay? So you guys just wrote down six separate custom six separate categories that Rome was influenced by the Greeks or the Etruscans, both of their neighbors on either side. So it's really interesting to see that they had that kind of boost um, when they were getting started. Like no other civilization had that boost as well. So they really, really lucked out there. Um, Colin, Kate, any questions on your end that you guys can think of uh, before we kind of wrap things up here. No, no questions. So since I'm not hearing, um, from them, is there I don't really think I have any questions. I okay, is there anybody no, else? Pretty well. uh, make sure your hand, if you, it was raised for another reason, make sure your hand is down. If you have a question about these six sections, I would love to hear it. Leilani. I was literally just about to put my hand down. I'm so no worries. No worries at all. Um, Victoria. So just to clarify, because I want to make sure that I have I know everything that that will be due Friday. Uh huh. For your class, do Friday. What we need to have by Friday is the Socratic seminar reflection and the map and question questions, or is that just for? No, nope, you got it. Yeah, the Socratic reflection, which you can turn in as early as you want, and then the map and questions, which again you can turn in as early as you want as well, but it's due by Friday. Yeah. Does that help? Okay. Thank you. Yes, it does. Good. And I'm actually about to go over the map in question. So feel free to stick around and uh, watch a little, just five minutes on how to do that. Um, a lot of people might need that help. So I am very happy to go over the map in questions. I'm going to go ahead and share the map in questions on my screen and then show you a really cool um, a TCI tutorial. If you aren't able to print the map, if you aren't able to print the questions, I'll show you a really cool TCI tutorial. So your mapping questions look like this, okay? Here's the map, 
I know it's really hard to get a, your eyes focused on where Rome is because this map actually shows the whole Roman Empire. And all of the slashy lines here is all of the Roman Empire. As you can see, they, they kind of took over. So Rome, if you can follow my arrow, is right here, okay? It's right, it's very tiny in this large, large map. So I have a couple of suggestions today, which I'll go over in a second. And then guys, your questions are down here. It's just one through seven. Again, the questions like they always have, starting with the first map we ever did, helps you label the map, okay? So use the questions to help you label. Locate the Alps, label them, okay? Do you have to have an answer for that, Kate? Nope. No, you don't. You All like you have to do is check mark. Yep, check mark is perfect. So label the Alps. Number two, what mountain range runs the length of the Italian peninsula? Kate, do you need an answer for number two? Nope. Actually. Actually, yes, yes, yes. It's a question, yes. So this one is more of a statement, so you don't need an answer, but what mountain range runs? Yes, you need to write the um, Apennines Mountains. Locate Rome, number three. On what river is it located? Do you need an answer for number three? Yes. You do. And then, of course, labeling everything they tell you to label. So that's how you do those questions. Guys, as you know, as we get lower, like five and six, Sometimes there's like two or three questions. Look, there's one here. What direction does the Po River, what direction does the Tiber River, and then another question. So guys, make sure you answer all parts of that question or I'm gonna have to give you partial credit, okay? So any question that has like several questions, make it look like a paragraph, okay? So those are due by Friday. Now, if you can't print them out, here is a little hack, a life hack for you. Go into TCI. And I think a lot of you have done this before and it's really, really cool. If you go to the section, setting the stage, it's right here at the top, chapter 32. And you scroll all the way down. Take a look, it's that same map, but I'm able to write text on here, okay? So you can take this, you can write um, Po River, and then once you have it, you can drag it to wherever it is. Now, I highly suggest with this map, you use lines, because look how tiny it is. All of the features are gonna like be on top of each other. So if you do something like this, here's Rome, do a line, and then do Po River, you can say, or you can move it rather and say, look, here's the Po River and the line is pointing to it. Okay, again, if I need to do another thing, let's these mountains. Yes, choose. And then you can do the arrow to these mountains. And again, you can do the text over here. And guess what, when you're done, here are the questions. What mountain range runs through it? You can put your answers. You can put your answers. Guys, as soon as you do any work in the section, it tells me. So um, that's, that's kind of what you do if you can't print it out. Now, obviously, if you can print it out, do it on the map, take a photo and send it to me. But if you're having trouble or you wanna to try to do it this fun way, you can do it this way and then answer all the questions Remember all the questions that have, and every possible answer that the questions have. Now, this keeps going to eight, nine, 10. We're only stopping at seven, okay? So um, that's a really cool way to do your homework if you need, if you need that. Um, going back to our PowerPoint, just to kind of close out our lesson today, thank you for staying with me. I know we're a little over time, but um, thanks for being here. Your independent work for today. Please use color for your features, different colors. Practice using those lines. Look, I even included a map here that does that line strategy. 
because we don't want all the features on top of each other. You're not gonna know the features if, if you do it that way. So use lines, answer questions one through seven. If you are writing them out, please be neat, as neat as you possibly can. And then like I showed you on TCI, that really helps if, if you need that. The mapping questions are due Friday, as well as your Socratic reflections. And there is no test this week for history, you guys. So just those two assignments is what you have for me. And uh, that's, that's about it for the geography of Rome and how it got to be where it is and its influences. Um, this is my last day of teaching for the week. Um, so next week, we're going to go into more of like the daily life of Rome, um, a little bit about the Republic, a little bit about how it expanded as big as it did. So I hope you guys join me for those. Um, I have office hours today and I can definitely help you if you need help with the map. But I wanted to uh, say a thank you to Kate and Colin for helping us out today. Um, Kate, is there any person that you want to just say hey to before um, we go? I'll look at the list. Let's okay. see. Um, let's see. Uh, hi, Jada. Oh, Jada. Yay. And then Colin, thank you so much for hosting today. Is there anyone that you would like to say a little hello or a shout out to on, in our class today? And I think maybe Colin has left the lesson. So with that said, I'm going to say hello to, oh my gosh, there's so many people I want to, I want to say hi to everyone just because I miss you and thank you guys for sticking with me, all 44 of you to the end. So hi, I miss you guys so much. Um, visit office hours if you would like uh, today or any day this week. Friday, as you know, is extended. Uh, thanks, Rochelle, for saying hi to me. Um, and I hope that you guys have a great day. Um, if you need any help for your assignment, um, let me know. I'm going to be on EDSB. I'm going to be right here answering questions. So please, please take advantage of that because I want to help you. Um, have a good rest of your day, everyone. Work hard on your assignments and have awesome classes for the rest of the day. I'm here to help. So take advantage of that. Okay, guys? Have a great day. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.